off hostel. I'll give you a quick tour of the bunk room here while no one else is here. It's a tight space. <laughs> uh, you got this, this table thing in the middle. Okay, and then you got two bunks there, two bunks there, two bunks there, and two bunks here. And the bunks are a little tight, a little coffin-like. <laughs> Here's mine. You look back in here, got a light, I got a little, little shelf back there. You got an outlet built into the light, but you can see there's not a lot of headroom. And you're in here. <clears throat> yeah, you're what kind of wedged in. Do have curtains for privacy. Close those up. Got a little private space. Um, ladder for the person up top. And there is storage underneath. You can open these doors up and store things underneath and then if you have a lock you can lock it. Uh, they don't provide locks but that's an option for storing things. So anyway, it's a, it's a small bunk room. I'm surprised uh, they didn't build it a little bigger or make the mattresses the space bigger. I would have liked to have about another 12 inches of width and about another 6 to 12 inches of height for sitting up and you know changing and stuff. Uh, but Otherwise, I mean, it's comfortable, it's warm, it was warm in here, it was quiet. Uh, the mattresses were comfortable, so there you go. Good morning, campers. I'm just leaving Boots Off Hostel, and I had a little mishap last night. I was flossing my teeth, and one of my fillings came out <laughs> way in the back. Uh, so uh, I had to have my wife find a dentist. And uh, today's Tuesday, so I got an appointment for Thursday, which is ironically in the town that's closest to this hostel. But I don't want to wait around for two days, so I'm going to keep hiking and have to get a shuttle and come back here, go to the dentist, get my filling filled, and then get shuttled back to the, the trail again. Anyway, it's you know one of those things. Can't anticipate that. So today, 14.8 miles to. Moreland Gap Shelter, uh, where I'm camping for the night. It'll be my first time at a shelter in a long time. So I'm going to try out my new tent tonight, I think. See how warm I stay. <laughs> and uh, and tomorrow I'll be going to another hostel. So, all right, there's a truck down here running its motor. So I'm going to sign off now and uh, check in later. So just a quick update. I'm two hours in. I've covered 4.1 miles. The first three miles were mostly uphill, <laughs> so I wasn't making good time then. Then it flattened out a little bit at the top. I guess that's the flats of the Pond Flats Mountain. Uh, and now I'm going downhill. So I got about another mile and a half to two miles of downhill. So I'm picking up time, uh, 4.1 miles in two hours. That's about two miles an hour. Um, it's only 14.8 mile a day, so I've got just a little bit over 10 miles at this point. So I'm feeling good. Uh, when I get to the bottom of this, though, uh, in two miles or whatever it is, um, there's another up, and it's up for the rest of the day. It's kind of like gradual up, then it flattens, gradual up, and then it flattens, gradual up, and then it flattens, uh, all the way to the shelter. So the last, call it eight miles or so, it's a lot of uphill. So whether I can maintain two miles an hour, I don't know. Probably not the whole time, but... Um, I'm feeling okay. It's 11.30, uh, a little over 10 miles, you know. If I can do two miles an hour, I would get to camp 4.30, which would be great because I'm setting up my tent for the first time, unless there's no good tent sites and I decide to stay in the shelter. Uh, we'll see. If the shelter's nice, you know, if it's clean and, you know, doesn't look scary or gross or dark and dingy, then I may stay there. Um... But it's supposed to be nice weather, so I just assume try out my tent and, and my brand new tent. And give it a shot. So that's what's going on. There's not been anything exciting to see. Uh, just been switchbacks up the mountain, and now I'm going down the mountain. And all the plants and stuff are the same. I, haven't, I think I've seen a couple of chipmunks and one squirrel. <laughs> that's it. So, all right, uh, I'm headed down, and uh, I'll check back in later. I forgot to give you an update on the dog. So, the dog is back with its original owner. 
I'm assuming they took it to the vet. The vet scanned it for a chip, found a chip, found the owner, and they contacted them, and the owner came to get the dog. That's my guess, based on what I've heard, how things transpired. Um, here's the crazy part. Allegedly, the owner of the dog was furious that the dog had been rescued and said the dog was out running with our other dogs and she must have been too tired to make it all the way back home. Having been there and spending almost three hours with that dog, I can tell you that story is complete BS, at least part of it. Now the dog may have been out with other dogs. That dog was in no shape to be running through the woods. That dog could barely stand, let alone walk or run when I was with her. Now it's possible she got injured out there and that's why she was having trouble. I don't know. But the fact that the dog did not have a collar with the dog's name and the owner information on there so that the owner could be contacted if the dog got lost, that right there is evidence number one of an irresponsible dog owner. Evidence number two is that, first of all, they let their dogs run loose in the woods wherever they want and just hope that they make it home okay. That's irresponsible dog ownership. Number two. And number three, were they out looking for the dog? No. I was out there for three hours with the dog. No sign of anybody looking for the dog. So if they hadn't been contacted, would they have known the dog was missing? Oh yeah, by the way, if we hadn't come upon that dog, if no one had come upon that dog, that dog would have suffered miserably that night. It rained, it, it rained twice. It rained a cold rain first that I was in. Then later, after I got off the trail and was at the hostel, it really rained hard. Lightning, thunder, it was bad. That dog would have been soaked to the bone, would have been cold, would have been scared, alone. It, the dog was hungry. The dog scarfed down the tortilla and peanut butter I gave her. Drank every drop of water we gave her in the cook pot. Uh, she was thirsty, hungry, exhausted, sore, possibly injured. Don't know. But that dog is not the kind of dog to be running in the woods. I'm sorry. And here's, here's the last point I'll make. If you're a responsible dog owner and your dog doesn't come home and you're worried about your dog and you find out or someone contacts you, hey, we found your dog, we scanned it and found a chip and hey, you would think they would be ecstatic. They would be, oh my God, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm coming right over to get the dog. Oh my gosh, I can't think of enough. They would be falling over themselves with thanks and gratitude and they would say, you know what? You guys went to a lot of effort to get my dog. I can't thank you enough. Let me make a donation to your charity, your dog rescue group, to offset you know, the cost of the gas and your time and just to, as a thank you so you can help the other dogs. That's what a responsible dog owner would do, okay? No collar. Dog is not in the kind of shape to be running with other dogs in the woods, unattended. Nobody looking for the dog as far as I can tell. And owner pissed off that the dog got rescued. Okay, you, if you're watching this, and I hope you are, you are a dog owner. That's right. You're a piece of And you should not own dogs. And I feel terrible for that dog having to go back, back into your care. Because you're obviously a dog owner. And yes, I have to bleep that out. But you know what I'm saying. I think you can read my lips. So, anyway, kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, that experience. I'm glad we got the dog warm and dry for at least a night. And she got to feel what it's like to be with people who care about dogs. And not with a shitty dog owner like you, if you're watching this. Not, not you in general. Everyone else watching this, you're fine probably. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But <laughs> whoever owned that dog, you're a piece of Okay, so this doesn't look dangerous. Huge pile of boulders and rocks and rock walls on either side of me. 
from which these boulders and rocks have obviously fallen. So I'm going to move quickly through here. Woohoo! Made it! That was a 